Hi. In this video, I want to show you how to tempo map a live recording that was not recorded to a click and auto stretch it to a constant BPM and show you the entire workflow and help you out in case you have the problem. There are many different ways of how to tempo map in Reaper, but I found one video that was really easy and straightforward and matched my workflow. Uh, I will link that in the description. But the video did not show how to auto stretch it to constant time, so I had to figure that out myself. And um, yeah, this is why I make this video showing you basically the complete workflow. Before we get started, go to your uh, Reaper project settings and make sure that the time base uh, item envelope markers is set to time. I think this is the default, set it to time. And then also time base for tempo and time signature envelope set that to time and then we can listen to the recording or look at it maybe and we can see the grid lines do not line up at all so yeah this is how it sounds we see the grid lines do not line up and it is not recorded to a click so there will be tempo variations now the first thing I would do is find the first proper one in this recording. So let's go to right to the beginning. There's a guitar only intro. No beats. And I think the guitar player plays uh, without a click as well. So he's just feeling it. Okay, so let's set our cursor a little here. Yeah, that works for me. Um, split and, oh man, I always forget the shortest path of doing this trimming, but it's fine. Okay, so uh, now. I feel like almost cutting a little bit more. Yeah, let's do a little bit more. Actually, now I remember how to do it. Just like that. Okay, that's good enough. Good, now we have our one. And now the next thing we need is, or are the tempo markers. What we can do here in the view menu is um, show the tempo envelope. So basically we can add points and move them around, but there's a much better way. Uh, what you need for that though, is the SWS extension pack, which is free. Uh, you can just download and it's recommended for any Reaper user anyway. So go ahead and download that and install it. And when you have, you should have this menu in Reaper. Now with SWS, there come a lot of um, uh, useful actions and you can see two of the ones that I'm using here. The most important one is move closest measure grid line to play cursor. You can use whatever shortcut you feel like. I have a US or English international keyboard. So for me, shift uh, and tilde on the left side of the keyboard are very close to each other. And so is backtick. So move closest measure grid line to play cursor is shift tilde key for me. And then um, option plus backtick move closest grid line to mouse cursor perform until shortcut released. Um, right. So go in there add a shortcut of your choice and then this is done closing the dialog now we will play back and just add time markers whenever we encounter a one okay so i will let it play at the markers pressing uh, the tilde shortcut that i just showed you and i will probably speed it up so you don't have to listen through the whole thing uh, or add a chapter marker so you can skip ahead all right, let's go. So we're at the beginning. I will zoom in just a little bit and then hit play.
I'm gonna pause here and actually I messed up this a little bit so I will remove these just mark them holding right click delete go back to the last good one Okay, that's enough. Um, actually, let's uh, cut everything else. Um, yeah, we don't need all of this, so let's get rid of the the rest of the song here. For our purposes, this is totally fine. I did already more than we should have. Uh, maybe even cut. Let's cut it here. Um, we we don't need that much. <laughs> so we can also delete these points. Okay, so uh, this is how it's done. You can pause and play, you can rewind, you can correct uh, if you, you know, get thrown off by an offbeat here or there, uh, like I have done, um, and correct it. So now what we can do is zoom in a little bit. We'll make the track maybe a little bit larger and see how well I've done. I think actually a few of those are really good, but there will be some, some imprecisions. And now this second shortcut comes into play. In my case, it's Option or Alt um, Backtick. And you can go with your mouse cursor to the line then press the shortcut and now you can adjust and really get it neatly and tightly towards the transient that you want it to be then hold option key only option key to scroll horizontally and then we'll adjust this and we can adjust this a little bit you don't have to be overly uh, precise because after all uh, a little bit of imprecision is only human. Uh, but this one, for example, that is really not well aligned. So is this. And now you can see how the grid lines kind of move to the in-between transients as well. It's really cool. So this is too late. Yeah. I will quickly go and just uh, see if there are any ones that really stick out. Basically, if you see a gap between the grid line and the transient, you almost know for sure. Oh, you know for sure, not almost. So what is happening here? Yeah, so it's too late. Move that up a little bit. Um, move that here. And it's, you know, it, it is a bit of extra work, but I feel you don't have to interact with any dialogues at all. So it makes it kind of smooth, you know. And of course, I cut the song. But um, yeah, we're already done with this little piece. You can see the variation isn't too bad. Um, but now the click is actually, uh, or the grid rather, is already established and we can enable the metronome uh, make it a little louder by default it's quite quiet yep Sounds good. And then, you know, the drum fill here was also not played very well, but let's see.
But it's not too bad. You can see by the numbers, it varies between 106 and 196 here. You know, and that happens when you don't play to click, you close your eyes and you just feel the music. Um, okay, right, now we have the tempo map, the click is aligned, but it is not constant BPM. So in order to play it back at constant BPM, what we have to do is basically convert these variations into constant BPMs. In order to do that, we press Command A or Control A, whatever you feel like. Uh, or not whatever you feel like, whatever it is on your system rather. Um, yeah, and then we select all of them, right click, item properties. And now here for item time base, change this to beats auto stretch at tempo changes. You apply, this dialog comes up and asks you, are the media items already mapped to project tempo changes? If yes, stretch markers will be added to maintain timing. So yeah, well, well, we just did that. So of course we click yes. And now you can see the stretch marks. If you ever aligned drums before uh, to a grid or a song to a grid, you, you will remember or maybe uh, you will already know these stretch markers. So now that we have these, they're you know, not changing the playback speed of the item because we have the grid lines aligned to the tempo map. So in order to remove this alignment or change it, uh, all we got to do uh, is get to the start of the song. We'll select all of these, delete them, and now you can see how everything got uh, aligned to a constant BPM of 103.762, but I will change that to 104 to give it a nice round number. And now if we go in and we play it back again with the click. Okay, that sounds pretty normal. Now let's go to the drum fill. So as you can see, it's not really hard. The workflow is pretty smooth. Um, and yeah, if you know a better way to convert the tempo map into a constant BPM playback with auto stretching the items, let me know. I think this is the shortest path that I've seen. Um, and I watched a lot of videos about this. So yeah, let me know if you find an even better way. But I hope for everybody else who maybe searched for the solution to this problem, uh, found this helpful, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, until next time. Bye-bye.